Hey guys, it's Megan, and in today's video I'll be showing you guys how I made this DIY marker organizer from some old shoe boxes I had lying around. I know that there are a few videos like this out there already, but I did mine a little bit differently, so I hope that some of you guys will find this useful. I recently got this set of 70 new markers from Arteza. I have a review on them if you haven't seen it, and I really like them so far. It's been great having a wider variety of colors to play around with. They come in this case, which is really nice and everything, but inside each marker is held in by an individual elastic loop. I quickly realized that I am not the type of person that's going to take the time to put each marker back into the individual slot, plus I have a bunch of other markers from other brands that I keep in a separate container, and I wanted to keep them all together. So long story short, I decided to make this, and here's what you'll need to make one. Two boxes that are the same size. I used these photo storage boxes that I got from Michaels a long time ago, but you could also use two similar shoe boxes or regular cardboard boxes like the ones from Amazon. The benefit of using two boxes that are the same size is that you'll have to do less measuring. A knife, preferably one that's sharpened unlike this one was, but I made it work. Some glue. I used hot glue, but I'd recommend using something that dries a little bit slower so that you have time to position everything. I think that wood glue or E6000 might have worked better. Gesso. This is optional, but it makes painting a lot easier. And some acrylic paint. I also used my Posca paint pens and some vinyl to make a label, but you can decorate the box any way that you'd like. I started out by cutting off the sides of one of the boxes. I used the two long sides to divide the organizer long ways, and the two short sides to divide the organizer the other way. I cut two extra short pieces from the bottom of the box, but I only ended up using one of them. Here are all the pieces that I had once I was done. Next, I divided the short pieces into three equal sections. My piece of cardboard was 7 inches long and 4.5 and inches tall, so I made a mark at 2.5 and inches and 5 inches. Then I drew a line 1 inch below the top of the piece. I repeated this for every single short piece of cardboard. I divided the longer pieces of cardboard into four equal sections. These pieces were 11 inches long, so I drew a line at two and three quarters of an inch, five and a half inches, and eight and a quarter inches. On these pieces, I drew a horizontal line one inch above the bottom of the piece, and I repeated this on the other longer piece of cardboard. After the lines were drawn on each piece, I cut along the vertical lines stopping at the horizontal line that I drew. When that was done, I had five pieces that looked like this. I attached these pieces together using the slits that I cut in them as you can see here. The pieces were then able to fit inside of the second box. This is why we needed to leave one inch at the top of the shorter pieces and one inch at the bottom of the longer pieces. I tried using hot glue to give the pieces of cardboard more stability, but it was kind of difficult to glue everything together. I still managed to do it, but if any of you have any tips that might make this work better, I'd definitely appreciate it. I glued the finished squares into the shoe box with more hot glue, but I had to work really quickly before the glue could dry. There were some gaps because of this, and I think that next time I'd use a different type of glue that dries a little slower. I think wood glue or E6000 might work a little bit better, since it would allow the pieces to be shifted into the right place. Once the basic structure was assembled, I covered the whole thing with a coat of acrylic gesso. This step is optional, but it helps the paint go on a lot easier. This was a good move on my part because I was kind of starting to run out of acrylic paint. I ended up using two coats of the gesso on the box. When that dried, I covered the outside of the box with two coats of white acrylic paint. I used a sponge brush to give the paint a smoother finish. I covered the inside of the box with two coats of purple paint. I wanted to use white for the inside, but I knew that I didn't have enough and I didn't feel like going to the store to get some, although and now I'm out of purple paint too, so there's that. To decorate the outside of the box, I used my Cricut machine and some vinyl to make a label. This is the same way that I made all of the labels in my craft room, and I really like the way that it looks. I like using Glad Press and Seal instead of transfer tape to save money on vinyl projects. To spice it up a little bit more, I decided to use my Posca pens to draw paint drips on the top edge. Which, now that I think about it, it doesn't make a ton of sense since this is a box for markers, but whatever. 
At first, I used Posca pens for the outline and filled it in with regular acrylic paint, but I got tired of that real quick and just used the regular Posca pens for the rest of them. I really want to get some of the Posca pens with the larger tips. I like them because you can get the effect of painting, but not have all of the mess. Once everything dries, all that's left to do is add in your markers. I do have one thing to add about the Arteza markers, which is that some of the colors on the caps are way off of the color of the actual marker, so that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're considering purchasing these. They've also added an option to purchase the markers in a set of four of one color, which is really nice so that if there's a color that you run out of, you can replace it without buying a whole new set. I organized the markers by color, and we'll see how long that lasts, but I really like this storage solution so far. I even have room to add more markers in the future, which is great. I know some people prefer storing alcohol-based markers laying on their side, but the boxes that I had were a little bit small for that, and I've stored my Windsor & Newton ones upright for a year, and I've never had any issues with them. I can see it being beneficial if you have a small desk and a lot of markers to store them that way, and I know that that is technically the recommended way to store at least Copic markers, but these aren't Copic markers, so please don't come for me. You could use a box like this to store anything, not just markers. I could see it being beneficial to store maybe like paintbrushes or colored pencils or something like that, although if I did colored pencils, I'd make the boxes a little bit smaller. And here's just one final look at how my marker storage box turned out. If you have any other creative craft supply storage suggestions, make sure to let me know in the comments. So here are today's shoutouts. If you want a shoutout in my next video, go on to my sketchbook video that I just posted and comment a video idea that you have for me. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. And make sure to follow me on Instagram. It is at WellerMegs. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.